back streets in Morganton going out to dinner on our, well, yesterday was our 25th anniversary. Congratulations to us. But tonight we're going to the dinner because all the restaurants are closed on Tuesdays. Everything here is closed. Monday, Tuesday, and sometimes Wednesday. There are cool little places back here. We haven't even seen, <laughs> we haven't seen this little corner. There's a cool house over here too. So we walked up to the really cool restaurant. It looks pretty cool inside. A little bit, I don't know, for the prices of the food, it's not really the right atmosphere to have prices that high. But they seated us right in the back corner where my view was the back door and a fire extinguisher. <laughs> so I was kind of frustrated and asked for another seat. And the only other seats they had for us were like parallel to the bar and uncomfortable steel chairs. So fortunately it was right by the exit and we were able to slip out. We regret that we did not pay for our glass of water, but <laughs> you know, I don't know. I, I don't feel like that was really a, a crime. <laughs> so here's where we ended up. We thought we'd like to try a nice new place, but when it didn't work out, now we just have to go back to somewhere that we can kind of trust. <laughs> So now this side is mostly done. Just a little bit needs to be done on the corner here. The front, I did one board over here on the side because I needed to get this uh, plumbing started. This is where I'm gonna hook a garden hose which will bring water into the whole bathroom. Then Rico was helping again today and he got this whole shower wall done and this shower wall done. We just need to finish these out. This little gap right here is just where we came from one side and then from the other side and that's what was left and we were gonna put a strip of wood in there. But we also need to build a wall across here, across here. So I'm just gonna start my wall right on that gap and there'll be a little door to come into the shower and a door to come into the uh, dressing area here. I worked on plumbing today, so I got that supply line that you saw on the outside. I got it coming in over to the toilet and coming in over to the sink. We only have a cold line, not a hot. We'll have hot water in the shower, but not in the bathroom. So I capped off uh, one side of the faucet. So this side will turn on cold water. This side will do nothing. I capped it off because I think that sometimes water can go all the way through to the other side and we would pour water on the floor when we turn on the water. So now we won't have that problem. Just got the seat to put on there, hook up the supply line, just a couple odds and ends. I need to get a door on here. So those are things I'll be working on tomorrow. Okay, the toilet's done. I put up a little splash guard. I'm 
going to later probably paint all the walls white in here and leave them kind of rustic where I'd, I'm not going to put drywall or anything on the walls. So uh, that's done. Now we need to get the door on here. But the opening, I wish I'd planned ahead just a tiny bit better. The opening is a little bit short, so I got to cut this door down. So I pop the pins out of the hinges. I'm going to cut the door frame first. The door frame needs to be cut about this much. And then I'll determine how much I got to cut off the door. Probably about that much. Two inches. We'll see. Also, these are hollow core. I think only the bottom inch or so has a block of wood in it. So I'll have to, uh, we'll be cutting that block of wood off. So I'll need to make a new block of wood to fit up inside the door again and get it all glued in there. Make my door solid. With all this molding on here, it'd be difficult to cut off this bottom section. It's got all this, all these pieces. So I'm taking the molding off and then all I have is a flat board that needs to be cut. Um, I'm not going to use this molding anyway. It's kind of a fancy looking molding on a rust, uh, rustic looking outhouse. So I wasn't going to use it anyway. What's cool is there was a piece missing at Lowe's, a piece of the molding. So I asked if they would discount it and they said, how about 50% off? <laughs> I was thinking if they gave me 20, that'd be great. So I got the door for half price, which doors are outrageous. One little two foot wide door, $140. So $70 is more reasonable. That might be what I paid years ago. I'm sure if you go back enough years, it was that price. <laughs> but, uh, but I'm assuming before we had supply chain problems, the price was quite a bit lower. I'm walking around in the woods and I saw this snake. I wasn't even going to make a video, but the snake inspired me. <laughs> it's uh, kind of yellowish. Hmm. I'll have to look it up and find out what it is. Just cruising out that way. I just wanted to take a quick walk around and just see if I see any mushrooms. I know this is the time for morels. I've never seen a morel. Well, I've never seen a morel that I knew was a morel because I've never seen one when I was looking for them. Uh, so I'm out here just looking around, see if I can see anything and just get an idea of what areas might have good mushrooms. I already know it's a different season but I already know that uh, the chanterelles grow in a certain area, so I know where to go and look for them in the fall. So that's what I'm trying to establish is what places and what seasons are gonna have food. <laughs> and I know that the chigger season is starting again. I haven't had any clear chigger bites yet, but I know it's warming up and I, I suspect. And so I've got my new gators on. put these on. They clip to my shoestring. They have an elastic that sort of tightens up. They have a string that tightens up around the calf. So I'm hoping those will help me get less bites when we know that there really are chiggers. The wind has also been terrible today. Maybe one of the windiest days we've ever had. I think part of the sheep fence fell down not all the way down, just was leaning really bad. We had a tree fall on the old barn. It was a very small tree, so it didn't do a lot of damage, but we'll have to get it off of there sometime soon. All the lawn chairs, of course, are falling down and uh, 
somebody's loaning us some chairs. We're going to have some uh, kind of an event of people coming over. And so uh, some of those cushions had blown from the backyard all the way out into the front yard. The mailman left our mail on the golf cart today, so a lot of that blew away. <laughs> we don't even know if we lost anything important. Yesterday I was working on the outdoor bathroom and I have one saw horse that I don't like to just run the saw blade right through the top of the saw horse. I, I like to lift the board up, run the saw, set it back down so that I don't cut slices in the top of the saw horse. So I lifted the board up and got too close and touched my hand with the saw blade. <laughs> so that was terrible. Fortunately, it was not deep. It just, uh, well, I can't point at where, here, let me use this tree. <laughs> I'll use a tree to point. So it's cut like right here. It's only about maybe a quarter inch deep, about an inch long. So it just barely got me, but I'll tell you what, a little cut like that can be really sore and it's gonna make it hard to work tomorrow when I get back at it. This is an area where we're gonna be cutting a lot of stuff down and trying to make a pasture again. I want to uh, pay attention and I see like right where I'm standing here, there's a lot of what looks like elderberry. So I'm thinking this is elderberry and we need to save some of this when we start cutting in here and I see a bunch of it. I think everything green right here might be elderberry. It's really good for making a syrup that helps you with colds and flu and things like that. The trees are so small here because it wasn't long ago that they had cut some timber out of here. So this area is sort of doing a restoration full of briars, vines, all kinds of stuff. Um, some poison ivy. It seems like a lot of the big trees have poison ivy going up it. Uh, but here is, here's a plant that you see sometimes in disturbed areas. I'm pretty sure I know what I'm looking at here, that this is a pokeweed plant, which is edible if you cook it. It's poisonous if you don't. <laughs> um, I see the old stalk from last year. And it's supposed to be really good and tender, of course, when it's first starting to come up. We'll see a lot of that soon. I still have not eaten it yet, but I think I'm gonna try some this year, which I thought last year and the year before. <laughs> but I just, sometimes you're just too busy. When I get near these larger trees, I keep looking up to see if there's a large branch that's gonna fall on me or anything. This is a whole tree that could fall on you. A lot of times that's called a widow maker, just a dead tree waiting to fall. But hopefully the wind has done everything to it today to keep it from falling. Knocked all the loose branches and everything out of it. I don't know if you can see a little bit of a trail going up through there. And then maybe some deer have laid down right here. And then there's some continuing deer trail down through here. So that's one way that I'm able to get through here is I'll catch a deer trail every now and then because this stuff is so thick and it's full of briars and <laughs> vines you can hardly walk through it but this is a good time of year for that because a lot of these briars and things are dead and it's easy to just trample them down if you can get your foot up high enough to crush them down for a while this will be some lumpy bumpy pasture when we get it cut down and get some grass growing but there's a lot of it so we'll really get some good use out of this well I think this is the only fungus I'm gonna see today on this dead oak tree it's very dry I'm not even planning to look it up it does have little shapes like an oyster shell so I don't know if that means anything <laughs> because <laughs> I am no mushroom expert. I'm just learning a few. But while I'm over here, I saw these ferns. 
And then that led me to these little baby ferns, the fiddleheads. And then that led me to some really nice ones right here. I'm not gonna pick these today, but this is another uh, nice edible that you can find in the woods. Here's a vine that's annoying. It's very strong, but at the same time, it grows grapes. So it can also be a really good vine. I guess maybe there's a male and female in these. And so some vines don't have any grapes, but I've seen a lot around here that do. I think if you can get other stuff cleared away from them and let them really flourish, you can get some really large grapes. Maybe, uh, I don't know, the small ones are about three quarters of an inch. And then sometimes they can get up to like maybe inch, inch and a half. It's amazing. Mm -hmm.